Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's try to apply what we've learned so far. If they're the same, we can add or subtract them. If they're not the same, maybe we can make them the same. So let's see what we have here. Four, four different kinds of examples. Let's look at our first one. Notice that they're all the square root. That means their index is the same. And notice the radicand is the same. All of them have a five underneath the radical sign. So that means we can simply add and subtract them. So essentially we have three of these, minus two of those, plus six of those, or we can factor out the square root of five, and that would mean that we have three minus two plus six times the square root of five, and so that's equal to three minus two, which is one, plus six, which is seven times the square root of five, and that would be the final simplified result of that. On our next example, notice that two of the three are identical. They both have the same index and they have the same radicand, but the third one is different. So we can subtract this from this, but this one, there's nothing we can do about it. So we have 16 minus four, which means we have 12 times the cube root of 11. And then this one here by itself, plus two times the square root of five. And there's no way we can make these two the same. So that's as simple as it goes. On this one right here, at first sight, they don't appear to be the same, but notice 27 could be written as 9 times 3. So this can be written as, the, as 4 times the square root of 3 minus 5 times the square root of 9 times 3. And of course, the square root of 9 is 3, so this can be written as 4 times the square root of 3 minus 5 times 3. When I go ahead and take the square root of 9, I get 3 times the square root of 3, that's the only thing that's left. So this is equal to 4 times the square root of 3 minus 15 times the square root of 3. Now you can see that they're both exactly the same. They both have the same index, square root, and they both have the same radicand. So 4 minus 15 is equal to minus 11 times the square root of 3, and that's the final result there. And here, even though all of them appear to be different, we can actually make them the same. Let me put the equal sign over here. So I can write the square root of 50 as the square root of 25 times 2 plus 14 times the square root of 4 times 2 minus 20 times the square root of 9 times 2. Notice I can take the square root of 25, the square root of 4, and the square root of 9, leaving me with the square root of 2 for all three of the terms, which means that all would then be like radicals. And so this can then be written as 2 times the square root of 25, which is 5, 2 times 5, which is 10, times the square root of 2, plus the square root of 4 is 2, 2 times 14 is 28, times the square root of 2, and the square root of 9 is 3, 3 times 20 is 60, so minus 60 times the square root of 2. Now you can see that they're all like radicals, and we have 10 plus 28 is 38, minus 60, uh, that would be equal to minus 22 times the square root of 2. And so that's how you can make them all look the same if you can pull out a proper factor, so to speak. In this case, if you can realize that this can be written like this, this can be written like that, and that can be written like that, then you can simply make them all look the same. And if they're all already the same, you simply add or subtract them. And that is how it's done.